organizations moved away from winners and losers in sports and other activities. Why have they decided that it's better to just tell everyone that you're doing a great job? Don't get me started. Uh, <laughs> I am here <laughs> to get you started. They won't get sued. What is it? They won't get sued. Okay, they won't get sued. Okay, why else? Millennials just won't put up with not getting something out of okay. participation. Okay, I don't think it has to do with being sued. I do think there are some things no, no, our no, schools do. Well, but the, the millennials, yes. they, they just can't stand not being appreciated. These okay. Younger kids, they want to be appreciated. They want to receive okay. something. Give me a sticker. I want a trophy. We've got a wall full of little okay. tiny trophies. But haven't we trained them to that? Haven't we trained them to want that recognition instead of results? Yes, in the back. Okay. All right. Isn't that is there that feeling, this general feeling that negative feelings are bad, mm -hmm. that they bring you down, they tear you down, and so if we can raise a child never having negative feelings, then we've won, and they'll be confident and great children. Yes. Opposition in all things. Okay. All right. This brings me to this this concept. I've talked about this a little bit on the air. You might have heard this. Um, you all know what a pendulum is. If you know me, you'll know I'm very proud of animation and PowerPoint. And if you'll just look at the pendulum. It's so pretty. You are getting sleepy. Relax. See, really, I'm just going to hypnotize you into being great parents. See? And wouldn't that work better if we could just do that? And suddenly, bam. All right, there's a reason that the pendulum is so important to me. We're going to talk about it a couple of times. If you look at this pendulum, you'll see I've got two sides. One side represents failure. The other side represents success. Okay? There is a pendulum, or there should be a pendulum, in everything that we do in our life. This would be the opposition in all things kind of concept. And here's the point. One of the most important things I think you can learn in parenting, in marriage, and in management in any relationship you have is that there can be no feelings of success without the potential for failure. Why is that? Somebody explain that to me. Why is that so? Any ideas? Yes? Okay. Okay. Yes. There's no risk. What is success? Define the word success. What does it mean? You, you've overcome something, right? You've achieved something. There has to be something to overcome. And if there isn't, you, you can't fail success. How many of you remember this program? Did any of you watch Fear Factor? I couldn't stand the eating, the worms part, and the, you know. But I, I could handle the other stuff. But every Fear Factor episode, the people would come on and say, I've overcome my fears, my fear of heights, my fear of this. And I'm like, come on, you were strapped in the whole time. Right? Well, what happened? You, you didn't overcome anything because there was no potential for you to fail. You knew the whole time, I'm safe, I've got safe, I've got everything, I'm strapped in. There was no, that feeling of success, I promise you the next time they were on a tall building, they went, you know, if it was fear of heights. They didn't overcome anything. But they thought in their mind they had. All right, so go back to this concept. You see how I've defined, if you look at a task, something you have to do. Maybe you're in the office and you have a task to overcome. You can only succeed to the extent that you can fail. The greater feelings of success will come with greater risk or greater potential for failure. And this is, a, this is a concept that I learned early on. I'm, I honestly don't know where I got it, but you see this in everything that we do. So what would happen if you said, I'm going to get rid of this half? What happens? Can you feel success? You wouldn't know what it feels like without... You wouldn't know what it feels like to be successful. You can't do it. All right, so again, there can be no feeling of success without the potential for failure. When we fail, 
we are motivated to try again and to be better if we're trained to do so by our mom and dad by our parents how many of you know the story of Michael Jordan you know much about Michael Jordan what happened to Michael Jordan on his on his high school basketball team he was cut now if he lived in our world today our our weird and wacky world he'd pack it up and somebody there'd be stroking him and say it's okay you what do we say I you tried you did your best you, you did fine which I'm not saying that those comments are not appropriate at times but if they take away the incentive to improve they're deadly if you take away the consequences for actions they're deadly and what you get is mediocrity the removal of failure can only result in mediocrity in fact this says it takes a lot less time and more people won't notice the difference until it's too late <laughs> which I really like that okay so you've got mediocrity this is a concept just just kind of a sidebar here managers that micromanage if you want something done right do it yourself deadly and what does this say look I said I'd bring you the report on micromanaging just give me a chance and you see his boss reaching behind him and doing it for him micromanagement of your kids of your coworkers, takes away every opportunity for them to be successful and when you do that when when there's no opportunity for for success here's what will happen children and adults alike will slip into what I call minimum expectation mode minimum expectation mode is when I go to work and I do as little as possible I draw as little attention as possible I try to get through the day and collect my check there's no reason to try to do more because I'm micromanaged to death I never feel successful because I'm never given an opportunity to succeed and you see children today in minimum expectation mode with their parents no matter what I do for mom and dad I can't win they don't ever give me an opportunity to be trusted so I'm just gonna around them I'm gonna live in such a way to avoid conflict and outside the world I'm gonna do what I really want to do minimum expectation mode is a result of trying to remove failure potential failure from the pendulum does that make sense all right parents and managers who continually micromanage rob those underneath them of the ability to feel success and grow I feel like my little burglar guy I'm very proud of that guy. all right let's get the remote to work yeah that's the, that's the question proper discipline is a must if children and adults alike are going to feel success and progress in their lives unfortunately in today's world I've heard managers say I don't I don't want to hold them accountable to this because they'll quit they'll they'll stop working for me they'll go somewhere else it's my experience that children and adults love to be held accountable don't you love it when you go to work somewhere and there's a clear guideline for success your your tasks are mapped out you know your everything's defined for you isn't that an easy working environment or have you worked where I've worked most of my life where you get there you're not trained and when you find out what you're supposed to have done is when the boss is in your face letting you know as fast as possible he didn't train you he didn't define the task for you he didn't tell you what the expectation was yet he's holding you accountable to it instant minimum expectation mode when that happens people suck in they say I'm not gonna try because I don't know what the parameters are and it's interesting as parents have we defined the parameters in a clear way for them to understand uh, you, you look at schools across